I'm Brian Curtin, uh, director of the Python Software Foundation and uh, Outreach here from Rackspace. Um, he's going to talk about uh, a couple of those things and some Python, so uh, enjoy. Hi, uh, Brian. As you said, uh, uh, director of the Python Software Foundation. I'm leader of the PSF Sprints Committee. I work with the Outreach and Education Committee. I do a lot of Python stuff. Uh, and I'm kind of here for my, my day job, which is for Rackspace, the developer relations group. We, my team specifically is here to make uh, developers happy with Rackspace. Using our API, using our stuff. Um, before I go on with the, uh, the Live Cloud talk, which is the main thing on the schedule, I uh, figured I would just kind of share a little like PSF news, PyCon news. Um, uh, who's planning to go to PyCon, by the way? In Montreal in April 9th or 15th. Raise your hand, Ben. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> cool. Uh, anyone who's not, you should think about it. Uh, PyCon's awesome. It's uh, the biggest PyCon conference. Uh, well, I think uh, last year we were right around 2,500 people. This year in Montreal, I think it's made off shooting around 2,000 people. Um, there are 95 talks. There are 18 tutorials. Um, I can't remember how many posters there are. It's, uh, the schedule should be out in the first or second week of December. Uh, tickets are already on sale. The uh, early bird rates were about halfway through. We do. First 800 tickets are early bird, which is uh, the corporate rate. I think is like 25 or 30 percent off. And it ends up being like 400 bucks. Um, everything else is 20 something percent off. Uh, it's it's a fairly affordable conference. I think individual tickets are something like 250 early bird, maybe 300 for uh, uh, standard rates. And those rates have not changed since I have been doing Python for seven years. And I know people have said before that they haven't changed. So all this while, they've been fairly cheap. It's really, really cheap compared to a lot of other conferences. Um, the first two days, the uh, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, are tutorial days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the conference days. And then uh, Monday through the following Thursday is all sprints. Um, for all this day, and Python code, and that we've packed with people using that. Um, so yeah, Python is pretty cool. Um, other news, uh, one of the other things I do with PSF is we sponsor uh, user groups such as this to do development sprints uh, on their own. So that's the, the sprints committee. So if you guys want to turn this into like a hack night, and so have someone come up and talk, then the rest of the night, work on a project, sit around working on your own projects, just get together and hack. Uh, we'll buy you pizzas, we'll buy you drinks, whatever. Um, really whatever you want to use that for. Ideally, not beer, or don't tell me it's beer. No, that doesn't. <laughs> I suggested this uh, uh, to the group a while ago and didn't get too much response, but there are a lot of new faces here, so I definitely <coughs> want to take advantage of this. We've talked about it a number of times. At the very least, to like, even like, get together, maybe learn some Python 3 and like, try to convert a library together or something like that. And that's, and that's one of the things that a bunch of groups have done. Uh, so, as far as our committee, we're, we're pretty loose in saying whatever your group wants to do, you can do. Uh, it should be Python related, obviously. Um, a bunch of people have gotten together to you know, spruce up their user group website, to good use of funds, and we happily give that away. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons why this was even created was to get people thinking about Python 3 and porting libraries. And in South Africa, the Cape Town Python user group, was instrumental in getting uh, the first thing they ported was I think it was Jinja template engine, um, and then they also were huge in getting the uh, Matplotlib library starting close to Python three. They got a significant portion of it done in a day. They hung around the next day. Um, I think it's been released uh, one point three or whatever. It was somewhat recently uh, has been released. So. It's been a pretty good uh, kind of group. People are using the fun, so it's awesome. And we'd love to have people use it. So I'm from Chicago. We haven't really uh, gotten groups together, like, like you were saying, like I'm saying, you know, 
a couple people are interested, get new faces in there, try to get it out there. I think we're actually going to have some of them uh, pretty soon. So we'd love to see you guys do that too. That's probably it from PSF, Python community type of news. So PSF just gives away money, they don't do anything else? Oh, <laughs> it's just giving away money. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the stop it from And you get pizza, you get pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's, 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 there's uh, plenty of grants uh, outside of just grants for people to work on stuff. Uh, the PSF also does a lot, they're the yeah. main funder of Python. It's for a million dollar conference to run at, so it's pretty big day. Um, yeah, so, anything else? Any questions about what to our on with the Python Software Foundation is or does? Cool, alright. Uh, when is PyPy going to be fixed? <laughs> yeah, for real. PyPy or PyPI? PyPI, Pi sorry. I didn't hear that. <laughs> I have no idea. What's broken? Your face. Nothing. Really. <laughs> Nothing. I was just being silly. <laughs> Alright. Um, let's just dive into uh, the cloud. Who here uses the cloud? Cloud. Cool. It's all around us. <laughs> Uh, before, before I worked at Rackspace, I have been doing, I've worked in trading for six or seven years. Um, that was all like C++ plus Windows stuff. I'm doing a handful, plenty of Python stuff as well. Um, and I worked at Canonical for a while, and I was working on Ubuntu One, which is that kind of Dropboxy type thing in the cloud, a lot of work on the desktop side of it. So really, until I came to Rackspace, I was not really using the cloud. I hate to say the cloud, it's just the easiest thing to do. Uh, so, I've been doing core Python development for three or four years now. Uh, they were kind of building up this developer relations team, uh, people that are good with APIs and working with the community and uh, getting out and just making sure our, you know, our customers are happy and making our prospective customers happy with us as well. Um, got involved with this team at Rackspace that does all um, Basically, cloud APIs. So we have uh, for Python, there's LibCloud, which I'll talk about. Pyrex, which is a uh, Python library for uh, Rackspace uh, products. It's also at the core of it. It's an OpenStack client, really. It's OpenStack first, and then the Rackspace implementation <coughs> on top of it. Um, we have a couple uh, Java people that work on JClouds, uh, which is an Apache project. We also have couple Ruby guys that work on Rum, um, Rum which is a Ruby command client, and also Fog, which is a multi-cloud uh, multi, uh, cloud library, and PHP Open Cloud for any PHP people. But uh, yeah, so I kind of joined this team. I've done plenty of Python stuff, know the Python guys, and had not really used the cloud. So one of the first things I, I did when I kind of came on, I've done plenty of Python stuff for years and it was just a matter of adapting to another you know, type of usage of it was to kind of figure out how to use all this stuff, how to deploy servers, how to you know create load balancers, create all this stuff. And th the first thing that kind of helped me wrap my head around all of this was thinking of a non-hello world example to kind of put out there. Everyone always says, oh yeah, we'll just deploy a server, put hello world, you know, very, very basic stuff. I wanted to have a little like, web app that I could actually put out there that does something that I can actually show off to someone that thinks, oh yeah, well that's actually something useful. Um, so, I think we're all developers here. We all paint the bike shed um, fairly often at work, and we always want to wonder what, what's the best color for this bike shed. Uh, red is not always the answer. I kind of agree. I think teal would be. Uh, you know, more. Depends on the color of your yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. So we all get uh, the problem there. Uh, Painting the bike shed. Uh, I wanted a an API in the cloud that would tell me what the bike shed color should be. Uh, and I denied my introduction to being able to present some of this stuff was to build that simple bike shed API 
and pull it on my cloud and have it across a couple load balancers. And I originally did this for um, with Pyrax, that other API. Uh, LibCloud, just the same, do the same thing. So I'm going to walk through kind of what LibCloud is, what it does, and then show you the answer to how you can paint the bike shed the proper color. No, this is weird. So, turn it up. Let me just see how it's big. Dig in. There you go. Wow. No. Can, we, can we read this? Should I make a different color scheme? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Alright. So, very simply, this looks like fancy. This is the, the bike shed at CPI. It's just a very simple last application. Has a uh, get color, just returns JSON that is uh, a hex string for the RGB uh, equivalent uh, for your color of the bike shed. And that is deployed to my, to my cloud. So I. <laughs> so, so the goal of LibCloud is to abstract away a lot of the, the kind of the differences between uh, cloud providers. So uh, for compute stuff in LibCloud, it supports, I can't think of the number off the top of my head, it's probably 25 different providers. Um, it abstracts away all the differences of authentication, the differences in how the APIs talk, whether they're XML or JSON or SMRPC or however they're doing it. Uh, mixed into one kind of nice common common framework to use. Uh, uh, very basically, and I even abstract this stuff away. Basically, you just have get a driver from a type of provider. So, get driver on provider on Rackspace is going to get the Rackspace driver for compute. If I do it for EC2, it's EC2. If I do it for software, it's for software. Uh, same thing with the load balancer stuff, but uh, I have little functions and some example scripts. So. Um, so the first thing I want to do when uh, I'm joining my cloud is uh, some compute resources. In LibCloud, they're called nodes. Uh, so I'm going to create a new node. Uh, very simply, uh, this driver got create node creates a node for whatever the specific driver is, and then and I'll show in a second, this little command line just takes the driver, and you can, it kind of makes it pretty easy to work with. Um, just create a node using, give it a name, give it an image and a size. Image is the like, disk image, whether it's going to be 1304, or it's CentOS, whatever. Size is your uh, the size of the image, whether it's a 512 meg, or a gig or two gigs, whatever it is. Um, I have a little harness to like this. Can you track it away as well? Or do you have to know the size for each of the providers? Is there a way to do So I'll show in a second. There's a, I kind of abstract away the abstraction in this example script, but you get that. So you could do, um, like you would do a driver dot uh, list underscore images or list them for sizes, and it'll give you back the different sizes. And I make it, there's a little function in here that'll say, if I want 512, regardless of my provider, just look for the one. Because they, they're all consistent in having in the size object always has like a RAM uh, attribute, which says it's always 512, or it's a gig, or it's whatever. Same thing with uh, virtual CPUs. Uh, those are the two things that they're really keyed off of. So you could always say, I always want to get something from some provider that has eight CPUs. And you can always figure it out that way. Uh, next, so I want to create my node using an image, a size, and there's an extension, ex underscore key name, where I can associate uh, my uh, SSH key. So I can do my key pairing. And I'll show how to do that in a second. But at the core of it, just to create a node, you just give it a name. Simple parameters. Um, the ex underscore anything that is not a part of the, really the core, the core abstractions that fits for almost all, probably all of the drivers, is an extension. So 
really for compute. We're going to do create, update, delete, simple stuff. Um, adding key pairs, not all providers do that. So the ones that do support the extension uh, arguments. And I'm actually creating the key. So I'm going to jump ahead here. So before we're going to create this node, we're going to actually do um, add a key pair. And add a key pair is very simple. It's just on that driver, um, you have to import a key pair. So you just give it a name, uh, a friendly name for it, and then the actual key. And that sends it off. So this will add a key pair from, so you generate a local key pair, then you can generate, switch. Yeah, so you'll just, I'm gonna, you're going to give this the file name. So I'm just going to say this is going to be um, Brian's key. And I just give it users, whatever key. Okay. So you just push the public key up then? Yep. So I've done, I actually did, I, so because live demos are usually terrible, uh, I did a lot of this earlier. And I've already done, so I did, in this script, so. I just have this script called Cleppy, dash P backspace, which is my provider, and there's an add key there, and I would just say, <laughs> uh, oh, it's uh, well, that's why I don't do that that much. <laughs> As you saw, I already did. Last time I tried to move on to server there and fell apart too. That's all right. <laughs> when Ken was up here, it took him 20 minutes on himself. <laughs> so, yeah, so before I'm going to do my, uh, my create node, I'm going to have my, my key pairs already set up, and I've already set that up. And now I'm going to do uh, one of my other options in here. In my little script was create a node. And I did dots of count. This script, so I did copy dash p backspace create dash node uh, image. So I gave a little comma separated list of a couple uh, descriptive things about an image Ubuntu 13.04 uh, and then saucy. I gave it a size 1024. Uh, that's not complete, but it was a key name. I'm going to create a server that matches the most of all the images. So it's going to iterate all these images. And if you do EC2 driver list images, you get some huge, ridiculous list of millions of images. Rackspace, it takes a long time. Um, Rackspace is much smaller. I, I, I did all these demos with Rackspace because I work for Rackspace and I have access to Rackspace stuff. Uh, the same stuff. I did do some of this uh, just checking it out, playing with it on Amazon, on Google, Google Compute Engine. It's all the same, uh, just the demos on Rackspace, it's easier for me. Um, but, uh, so the image part, so it, it will, when I go to build my, so my create node, it's my, my compute driver, which is Rackspace, and my Rackspace driver got list images, and throw that through this little find image uh, option. A couple of people have been asking in, in, in LibCloud how we could potentially add something like this when you're doing kind of on the, on the fly, I want to just kick off the server quick, do something, not really like production level where you want to have very specific, like if you're going to build your your website, you're going to have, you know, your frontline stuff is going to be very specific. You're going to, you want to know what it is. But if I want to kick something off, it doesn't really matter exactly what it is. Or if you're just playing around with it, um, easy enough to just say, I want an Ubuntu machine. It could be any Ubuntu machine. It off, it's done. As long as it's a, it's a one gig machine or it's a five to twelve one machine, cost isn't any different. So what this does, it's a very simple function that just puts together all my. So I put Ubuntu comma thirteen point oh four comma saucy. Um, does a little re uh, regular expression find all. So it tries to find those parts in each of the images 
and then it tries to figure out which of the images is the best match based on what I gave it. So on Backspace, there is one called Ubuntu space 13.04 parentheses saucy uh, whatever. Uh, and that matches pretty well while we're able to match. If you run that on the Amazon ones, you get more hits because more of them are, they have very, various configurations of 13.04. Uh, but it'll just give you the one that matches the best. And then it does the same thing for sizes. When I told it I want on the command line, I want to type 24. Uh, Rams and just in and just go through my sizes on backspace, at least on this data center. I'll talk about this. This will be different in the future uh, for all data centers. But right now, it's just going to give me the first uh, one gig machine finds, uh, the one gig size that puts it all together, builds me my 1304 image, one gig associate with my, uh, my key pair, and then goes off and creates it. Um, it'll take a couple minutes to create, um, a couple more minutes on MaxSpace than most other providers, but that stuff's going to be better with uh, the performance servers we just released, the draw SSDs, they're much faster. Um, a lot of things we've done to bring that time down, but uh, if you were to create this, and again, I'm not going to do it now because we're going to be sitting here for a couple minutes as I wait for that to finish, and it's already been done. So, uh, so if I, I don't think I do this. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm not even connected to the Wi-Fi. That's why. Uh, yeah. So it was going to print out at the end of this. It would say, "I have my machine. It's here's the IP. Because I'm uh, my key pair is associated with it, I can just once it's ready, SSH into it and do whatever I want. Have salt or something talk to it. Put stuff on it." Um, so what I did for this, I guess I should actually connect to Wi-Fi so I can show. Yeah. What does create no return? Uh, in this little example script, doesn't return anything. It just prints out. It's it's meant well, to be. What is like what is it called? Oh, called create note. It returns a note, and it gives you a note object, a note object which has your. Um, Server IPs, your the IDs, if you were to look them up in like your control panel, a couple of details about what you actually created. So, let's say your size, your image, your OS. Um, Do you give your password? Or? If you create, so like for Raspberry, if I if I didn't associate with my key pair, passwords. What's up? Uh, Ernest, I said Ernest, tell about your passwords. So, so I'll your password. <laughs> I borrow yours. Sure. <laughs> for uh, for the Raspberry one, if you don't. Associated key pair with it, it will give you the root password. Okay. Um, that's what. And then you have a way to get to your machine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Either you're going to associate it with it, or you're going to get. If you, if you don't do it, you're just going to get back that uh, password. And if you lose that password, you should just. Where does it put the key pair? Does it put it in the, like the root no host thing? Yes. I, I think I, I'm 99% sure that's what it does. Yeah, so if you, when you associate it, once that machine is off in a couple minutes, very simply just SSH to it and then. Um, 